I'd like to welcome you all. Take this opportunity to wish you happy holidays. As the record reflect that it is 7.09. <laughs> this meeting is starting on December 10, 2013. <coughs> Mr. Clerk, roll call, please. Councilwoman Steril. Here. Vice Mayor Galvin. Here. Mayor Thundro. Here. Councilman Bienname. Here. Councilwoman Keys. Here. Mayor, we have a quorum. Thank you. Let us all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. That will be led by Francesca Perice from Florida University, International University student. And I will ask you to remain standing because Pastor Telman Nolles will take us to the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing, please. <coughs> Let us pray. Would you please bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, we realize that your word declares that a nation without God will be desolate. So we thank you for this opportunity to stand in the midst of your dignitaries, those that you have handpicked to be over the affairs of the city of North Miami Beach. We praise you for the fact that they reverence you as the true and the living God. Now we entreat you, O oh God, in the name of your Son, who is our mighty Counselor, Jesus Christ. We invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit to advise, advise, instruct, and direct this meeting of these counselors tonight. And you have chosen them, handpicked them, and you gave them the authority to deliberate your purpose and plans for this city. We pray as they carefully weigh each hearing tonight that every decision will be according to your perfect plan. We believe it, we receive it, we decree it and declare that it's done in the mattress name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. May we please just stand for a few more seconds in memory of one of the great leaders that everybody knows that passed away. It's a former President Nelson Mandela. You may be seated. Thank you. And let us recognize tonight as well, I believe for the first time in our council meeting, the presence of our former mayor and my friend, Andre Pierre. Good evening, Mayor. Welcome. <laughs> Mr. Manage, are there any addition, deletion, amendments to the agenda? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, <coughs> We had posted online a, uh, some additions that we are respectfully requesting that they be added. Uh, under tab I, we have three items uh, that we would like to post. Um, and it would be add, I'm sorry, and it would be items one, two, and three, <coughs> respectfully as indicated uh, in your packet. Um, also, under ordinances, tab J, uh, we have under tab J1, we have a second reading. And also under the quasi-judicial items, tab L1, we also have a second reading. Under resolutions, uh, we respectfully request that tabs F and tab I be removed from the agenda. Tab F and what? Tab F as in Frank, and tab I as in India. This is uh, dealing with F dot. They wanted to postpone the item until January the 28th council meeting. Okay. Yes. And also there is, uh, if, if it, uh, you do find the opportunity, Mayor, uh, tab N as in November. Um, that item to be moved up. One of the presenters uh, does have 
uh, some travel arrangements. Uh, this is dealing with the discussion and, and approval for staff, uh, dealing with the Oats name change. You're welcome. Thank you. We must have a special presentation. Special presentation. Special presentation. <coughs> Would you like to ask the council to come down with me? for a special presentation tonight. I would like to apologize for my voice. Yesterday we were killed here with a room very, very cold during CRA board meeting. Myself and Councilwoman Keys are both sick today. Thank you, Alim. Tonight is very special to us because um, of two things. First of all, um, the month of December is a month that we do HIV awareness. And um, as the mayor of the city, we must say kudos to all those who every day deal and cares for people infected with HIV AIDS. And for this, we would like to recognize Miami Beach Community Health Center for in commemoration of the World AIDS Day. Come forward. <laughs> so as in recognition of your continuous involvement in the fi fight against HIV AIDS by providing medical services, counseling, prevention, and educational programs to the North Miami community. We dedic your dedication is greatly appreciated and held at the highest record. This, this 10th day of December 2013. Thank you, very Thank you. congratulations. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening. On behalf of the senior executive by uh, the senior executive team and the Miami Beach Community Health Center, we are so honored to receive this award from the city of North Miami. This is the inspiration to continue doing the job that we are doing every day. Thank you very much. Today as we celebrating the life of former President Nelson Mandela. When President Mandela was jailed in 1964 and apartheid was in South Africa, many of us thought that we are, we are not concerned. Uh, president, the President of the United States at that time did not believe it was something that he should have taken a stand when we're talking about human rights, human violation in South Africa. Today, that same President Mandela is being honored throughout the world because of his courage and the difference that he had brought in a country like South Africa. As a mayor, it's something that I don't do often. You're not going to see that very often for me to do, giving the key to the city, because I believe somebody must really deserve that key in order for me to give it to them. I don't want anybody to just open my door and walk in. Mm -hmm. But tonight, it's different. Same fight that we have had. At the age of 13, my first demonstration was a demonstration against apartheid. And today we are facing the same situation in Haiti, in the Dominican Republic. And for that, I have a young lady who has started a movement called Movimiento Reconocido. Those of you who, don't not, who does not know what's going on in the Dominican Republic <coughs> lately, the Supreme Court have decided that every Dominican born in the Dominican Republic of Haitian parent, they will remove their citizenship. 
and therefore deport them back in Haiti. And they go back as far as 1929. People need to understand, since we all stood up for apartheid, we must stand up for human rights violation. And this young lady flew from the Dominican Republic. She is, she was born in the Dominican Republic and they had removed a birth certificate from her because they are saying she's not considered to be Dominican. She's here and I have to comment Pastor Grigory Toussaint who was able to bring her here in South Florida in order for her to tell her story. And I would like to thank as well Mr. Fares Duvernay, one of our journalists who went all the way to the Dominican Republic and meet her. And she's here as well with her attorney, who's a Dominican, Madame Naomi Mendez. They are here to visit us in the city. Therefore, I would like to take this opportunity to give them the key of the city. It says, this key is presented to Ana Maria Belic, Movimiento Reconocido, in recognition of your hard work and dedication in advocating on behalf of Dominicans of Haitian descent to live in their homeland. City of North Miami, Mayor Lucie Tondro, December 10, 2013. Ana Maria, por favor, ven acá. I think that's conclude our presentation for tonight. We're going to have our governmental affairs, Ms. Natasha Colbrooks, to come and give us our city events and announcements. Thank you, Mr. Manager, Mayor, and City Council. Good evening, everyone. My name is Natasha Colbrook Williams. And on behalf of the city of North Miami, I would like to share the highlights for the upcoming events for the city. Join us to pay tribute to the life and legacy of Nelson Mandela, Mandela at our celebration of his life and legacy on Thursday, December 12th at 6 p.m. in the Mocha Plaza next door to City Hall. Special guest MC Rebecca Butterfly Vaughn will host the event, which will feature song, dance, and spoken word tributes to an extraordinary leader who brought about the end of apartheid and unified a nation by standing for dignity, liberty, and most of all, forgiveness. For details, contact the Office of the Mayor and Council at 305-895-9818. Councilwoman Marie Stero will host her annual, ninth annual holiday toy celebration this Sunday, December 15, 3 to 5.30 p.m., Kiwanis Park, 121, 
zero zero northwest 16th avenue north miami residents are invited to celebrate the spirit of the holiday season with councilwoman sterile the holiday celebration features games activities a toy giveaway from a very special guest visiting from the north pole okay. call the office of the mayor and city council at 305-895-9818 for more details Join Mayor Lucy Tundro to take a million steps towards a better health at our next Walk This Way Family Fun Day event on Saturday, December 21st from 7 to 9 a.m. at the North Miami at, Le at Levitt Stadium, 2555 Northeast 151st Street. The Family Fun event aims to get families out to walk our parks. Community health partners will be on site offering information and giveaways. Contact the North Miami Parks and Recreation Department for details on the Walk This Way program at 305-895-9840. Just as a reminder that our administrative offices are closed on Tuesday, December 24th and Wednesday, December 25th for the Christmas holiday and also on Thursday, December 26th for employee furlough. This concludes my announcements. Thank you, Madam Deputy City Manager. Any news about Hurricane? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Madam Mayor, the hurricane season is over. Last uh, Council meeting, I gave the last report for the hurricane season. Thank you. Is that mean that the board is not working anymore? There's a preparedness board. <coughs> they are inactive until June? We're still meeting. Okay. So they are prepared for next year? To prepare for next year. For nothing. <laughs> Thank God. We were blessed again this year. Well, it's not over yet. I remember Wilma. Yes, come after the season. Mm -hmm. Came after the season. Do I have a motion for a consent agenda? May we, may we vote on tab C separately, please? I, I'm sorry. You need to make a motion. I'm sorry, Mayor and Council. Did you want the city projects update? You do? Yes. Um, we do have uh, our Assistant Public Works Director, Mr. Carrot Fittler, to give a brief update. Good evening. Um, I'm going to update you on two projects. Um, one of them is um, the PAL. We're currently in negotiations with the awarded vendor. Um, that's where we are right now with the PAL facility. Um, also, North Bayshore Park. Uh, we revised the scope of work to inc incorporate a few changes that some of the, our constituents um, wanted to see within the design um, before we go out to bid. So that's where we are with both projects. That's it. We also want to say that the North Miami Gymnasium mm -hmm. at the high school has been completed. Uh, it's up. And wow. the city's partnership is that the school board has it during the day. Um, Parks and Recreation has it in the evening. We will be looking at that to explore some options of programs that we would like to have. That Gymnastic are, classes. Absolutely. That's not offered in other facilities, gymnastics being one, mm -hmm. so that we can have a very good, diverse um, uh, program offered through our Parks and Recreation Department. Good. And the start of the playground is on schedule. Uh, it should be uh, commencing, I believe, February or March should be completed during the mid-summer of 2014. Which playground are you referring to? The this empty the lot by the school? The empty lot, the Cagney Park. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we also, um, uh, we have underway the uh, Pepper Park tennis courts. As you know, those, that park has uh, uh, gone through a lot of changes. Uh, we're in, there's a need to upgrade the tennis courts. Uh, so the requisition Overdue. of that project has been done Overdue. and we're s looking to commence work within the next two weeks. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it? That's it. Let me also recognize the presence of my very, very good friend, Mr. Frank Wallen, former Mayor Frank Wallen. Good evening, Frank. Welcome. <laughs> Citizen Forum is now open. Thank 
That was not the former mayor. That was the citizen that you just welcomed. <laughs> yeah. I'll sit down. I just wanted to ask for the opportunity to speak at uh, item O. But it's premature because you haven't got there yet. If that's okay with you. Thank you. Thank you. Citizen Forum is not close. Do I have a motion for a consent agenda? I'd like to move that we vote on tab C separately, please. I'll second that for discussion. Go ahead. Um, I voted against this last night, and I would like to vote yes on the other three items, but I will not vote on tab C. Would Say that again. I voted against the CRA budget last evening and would not, um, will not be voting on it in favor of it this evening. Okay. So I'd like to just vote, take a separate vote so I can vote affirmative on the rest of the consent agenda. You just have to record it. No, you don't need to take it out. Because we discussed it last night. Okay. Thank you. Besides Councilwoman Keys, anyone else wishes to record it? No. Thank you. Mr. Clerk. Now, Mayor, um, for the consent agenda, I'm going to need a motion and a second, and then I could register the, um, the vote for one. So I would still need I a motion and a second. It's been moved. moved. Oh. Okay, no. stereo, move it. I move it, yeah. Okay, may I have a second, Mayor? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the vote, just for the record, is 4 1. The only council member who voted against the uh, consent agenda was Councilwoman Keys. Tab, just for the record, Mayor, would you like me to read tab N first? Was that correct? Mr. Manager? Yes, okay. if the mayor. Okay. Tab in. Okay. Discussion and approval for staff to meet with the Oaks regarding their name change, thereby amending the existing lease to reflect name change. Tab in. Uh, move uh, move approval of tab is in is a Nancy. Anybody from the Oaks here? They're here if you desire to speak with them, Mayor. I think we did put inside of the um, um, enough documentation that would show the name change um, to 151 at Biscayne. Um, they're just seeking approval for you to allow staff uh, to move forward and executing their request. I don't mind approving it. I'm just curious to find out if they think they are jinx with the name Oaks. <laughs> where, where is the Oaks? Oh, the representative of Oaks? Okay, when it's big board, are you going to de deny him the opportunity to present? Big board is below me. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Nice. Very nice. All right. So you're changing the names of the Oaks condominiums to 151 at Biscayne? Oh. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> um, the whole reason behind it was basically there's a, a stigma associated with the Oaks just due to, you know, its history, et cetera. And Jinx. as part of, you know, the repositioning and the transformation of the asset and building the amenities, this is kind of part of, you know, the overall plan to, um, you know, transform the, uh, the asset. Very good. Mr. Clerk, will call, please. Uh, I would second Mr. Gallant's motion. You already did. I didn't second it. Yes, you did. I heard you. Roll call, please. Roll call vote. <coughs> Tap in. Vice Mayor Galvin. Yes. Mayor Thundro. Yes. Councilman Bienname. Yes. Councilwoman Keys. Yes. Councilwoman Stegian. Yes. And passes 5-0. And what we would do, Mayor, is we will execute that, and it would be on the consent agenda for January 14 for just to approve the uh, amendment to that lease. For the old, it's coming back on the January agenda? Well, you're going to put it on the, on the consent agenda? Right. You're giving us permission now to Good. execute the document. Sure. And, of course, the, any amendment would have to be signed and approved by council. Very good. So it would just be on the consent agenda. Okay. S excuse me, Madam Mayor. Uh, Andrew Hellinger, the Oaks receiver. 
uh, a point of clarification. The lease between the Oaks Association and the city merely requires the city's consent to an item that is not adverse to the city. I would ask you to consider the name change not being consent. The manager then would have the power under the lease as written to execute this consent. It's not a lease amendment that the association is asking for. It's merely an acknowledgement by consent that the change of the association from the Oaks Wanted Biscayne Landing Condominium Association, Inc., to the new name is not adverse to the city, and the lease already allows the city to go ahead and sign that consent, and our council has prepared and delivered the consent both to your manager and to your uh, city attorney. Madam Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Madam City Attorney, is that <coughs> what you recommend? I will, I will review the documents now that you've uh, voted for it and advise whether it requires to come back to you or not. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I've asked our council to contact the city attorney because our, our reading is the city's already allowed it so they wouldn't have to come back. But thank you. Thank you. Mr. Clerk. Tab B. E. Proposed. B. E is in E. <laughs> Am I correct? E. Oh, okay. E. That's right. So um, E is in E. e. Yeah. Okay. What? Proposed resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, approving the award of fiscal year 2013 through 2014 community development block grant funds to not for profit community based organizations providing for an effective date and for all other purposes. Okay. Public hearing is open on this one. Public hearing is closed. Uh, oh. Again, I'll try to keep it brief. Um, there is an organization that for many years has appeared before our city council and asked for support. Um, it was originally called South Florida Food Recycling, and then it was called Stop Hunger. And some of you may know or have known former councilman Julie Lippman from the city of North Miami Beach, who started the organization. And what they do is they pick up food from places like Costco or BJ's when it's out of date, and then they distribute it to people who don't have much money who need it. And it's a very worthy food recycling or food bank type organization and becomes that much more relevant as, uh, as the government cuts back on money and funding available for poor people and their benefits and elderly people. And they, they don't discriminate. They give food to whoever it is who needs it, who is hungry. I've recently been, become involved in some litigation concerning this organization. It had problems with its landlord and other problems, financial problems. It did not submit its grant application in time to the city. And um, I would just ask that you, I, I, I absolutely support your what you're doing, and it, this, the support that the city provides for community-based organizations is very important and the ones that you've selected are all worthy. Unfortunately, because of the death this past year of Mr. Littman and other factors, they did not meet the grant deadline of October. They did not apply and so they're not being considered. I just wanted to mention that to you and make you aware of it and if their situation allows as such, I would like to be able to come back before the council with their officers and their board on their behalf and perhaps the city could make some allowance and you don't have to say anything. I just wanted to make you aware and say thank you. Bye. Thank you. Public hearing is that closed. Is there a motion to for tab E? I would make a motion to approve the staff's rec recommendation. I'll second that. Discussion? Councilman? Councilman bien -Aimé? No. Madam Steele? No, ma'am. Anyone wishes to call a no? Okay, item passes 5-0. Tab G. Proposed resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, 
electing to use the uniform method of collecting non ad valorem special assessment levied within the unincorporated <coughs> area of the city of North Miami for the cost of providing residential solid waste collection and disposal services and residential and commercial stormwater services and <coughs> facilities stating the need for such levy directing the transmittal of this resolution providing for <coughs> an effective date and for all other purposes public hearing is open on this item mr manager any special presentation on this no presentation okay. public hearing is now closed I have a motion <coughs> on tab F. Madam. So moved. This is tab G you're moving for. Correct. On okay. tab G is in Galvin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll second it. Discussion? Anyone wishes to record or no? Or no? Okay. Item passes 5-0. Tab H, proposed resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, extending the hours for the sale of alcoholic beverages for New Year's Eve, <coughs> providing for an effective date and for all other purposes. Move approval. Is that your item, Scott? I'll second. No, but it would be <laughs> if I could. <laughs> I'll second this with pleasure. That's yours too? Yes. Public hearing is now open. <laughs> Public hearing is closed. Anyone wishes to record a no? <laughs> Mr. Clerk. Item passes 5-0. For the record, I was about to vote on For the record, tab I was removed, so we're on tab I-1. We add on resolution. Proposed resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, authorizing the city administration to exceed the maximum award amount per eligible property under the Northwest 7th Avenue Commercial Facet Program Guidelines from $80,000 to $105,000 in order to provide additional assistance for one commercial facet rehabilitation project for the property located at 13090 Northwest 7th Avenue, providing for an effective date and for all other purposes. I Public right. hearing is now open. Fat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> For the record, it's facade, not facet. I'm sorry. I was just corrected by our city attorney. Sorry, guys. <coughs> Thank you. My name is William Goldsmith. I'm the owner of these. Um, this is actually a bookends project. There's two shopping centers here. One's at 130th and 441 Northwest 7th Avenue. And the other one is at 129th Street and uh, 7th Avenue. So hold on a minute, please, Mr. City Manager. Can you have them turn it around and have staff pick it up, put it on the monitor? Yes. Flip it around. They'll pick it up on the uh, And what we're attempting to show you with all of these pictures are existing conditions and what the product will look like when we're finished. On the left side of the room is the 129th Street Shopping Center as it sits today with New Way Foods as the tenant uh, anchoring the shopping center. And at the far left is what the product, the project will look like when we're complete with New Way Foods still anchoring the project and with Dollar General also occupying the space on the right, which is presently tenanted by an auto repair shop and a strip club. Both tenants were existing when we purchased the property um, and uh, their leases are either expired or they're leaving. Most of what I have to say, oh, by the way, on the right side is the 130th Street Shopping Center on 441. The third photograph is the existing conditions on what it looks like today. 
and all the way to the right is what it will look like when we finish the project. Most of what I have to say is equally applicable to both projects, as we agreed with staff to do both at the same time to maximize the effect of both in our efforts to transform the character of the neighborhood and improve the quality of the corridor. Combined on the two projects, we will be spending approximately 1.2 to 1.3 million dollars, inclusive of architectural and engineering fees and all oversight fees. Combined, we seek approximately 25% of our aggregate costs on both projects, or about $330,000. At the project to the left, which is the 129th Street Shopping Center, the costs that are in your commission package show expenditures of approximately $813,000 and we are seeking, as you know, about $225,000. These numbers are exclusive of architectural and engineering fees and all of our oversight fees and management fees. At the right, we'll be spending approximately $210,000, although with the few additions that we're putting on here that we didn't tell the city about to increase the overall impact it'll probably be closer to $240,000 or $250,000 and we're seeking about $105,000 from the city. We plan to hire local contractors we will improve the quality of the tenant mix. As I said, we're going to be immediately removing the automobile shop and the strip club, which I will point out in the photographs everyone can see. Or approximately a third of that shopping center. We will improve greenage areas to help soften the hardscapes on 441 7th Avenue, which obviously has very limited planting areas because of the proximity of the properties to the road and the expansion under the right-of-way projects that have taken place over the years. The shopping center on the left, the 129th Street Shopping Center, has something that a lot of other properties up and down the corridor do not have. It has a great setback from the street, which enables us to put in a tremendous amount of greenage, which enables us to soften the character of the neighborhood and to make it more user-friendly, nicer. We feel that combined that these projects will help jumpstart the retail leasing based on our past experiences. We own and operate over 100 shopping centers in 20 states. I'm one of the two owners of the company, so I can tell you that I'm, it's our experience that if you build it, they will come. Plus, we already have one bird in the hand tenant, Dollar General. We have a signed lease. We've included that in the commission package. This will happen if we can get assistance from the city. In turn, I think, we think, the city and the community will see a snowball effect where tenants will invest monies, Customers will come, others will improve surrounding properties, tax assessed values will increase, and income to the city in turn will increase. We feel good about this investment. We think the city should feel good about it too. The numbers that I've given you, the numbers that I say, they're real numbers. They're based on my experiences, our experiences in building. A lot of people talk about costs and the costs are inflated, either intentionally or because they themselves are overpaying and they don't know it. And the net impact is not commensurate with the expenditure that people make. We're good at what we do. We get bang for the buck. The city will realize the added value. After I finish speak, if any of the members of the council have any questions about any of the specific line item costs or any of the specific components of any of the plans, they're in the commission package and the senior project manager is with us, Dave Miller. 
who I work with on all of our projects, and he can go over any questions you have line by line, as I can too. Another thing that's important that we spoke about with the city manager, Mr. Johnson, is we don't sell anything. We maintain what we own. We're a stable and good long-term investment, I think, for the city. A lot of monies that are spent are wasted due to failure to maintain. They build it, they don't maintain it, it just perishes. We own and operate all of our properties. I started this company from zero over 25 years ago. We never sell anything. We maintain everything. Your investment, our investment, it will withstand the test of time. We'll preserve it with good and continuous repair and management. We can hand out brochures to cooperate, to support that we do own and operate all of these shopping centers. Lewis, who also works with us, will hand these out so you can see what we do. We probably operate and own and operate close to $1 billion of real estate in 20 different <coughs> states in over 150 buildings, 100 of which are shopping centers. We finish our projects on time and in budget. As I said before, we have over 25 years of doing these exact same work. I myself have built Walmarts, Targets, Starbucks, Big Lots, Verizon, movie theaters, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, grocery stores, including Publix, Aldi, Save-A-Lot. I just completed a McDonald's and a West Marine up in Daytona, right across from the Speedway. I've built practically anything you've seen in retail. We've historically done our work throughout the state of Florida and to the United States, but recently we've changed our focus to local communities, where we live and where we work. My offices are on 163rd Street, right next to the tire store that used to be a sound advice building. We're near completion on a similar project of the type that I'm talking to you about, where we renovated bookend shopping centers on 17th Avenue and 36th Street. We partnered with the city. We spent about $480,000. I mean, the city spent about $480,000. We spent about $480,000. We're next going to do Dolphin Plaza up on 199th Street and 47th Avenue, which is a supermarket and a Dollar Tree shopping center with many in-line stores. We think that the commercial facade program goals will be met and satisfied with the approval of this resolution. We will dramatically improve the character and feel of this neighborhood. And what we're doing falls squarely within the stated purposes of the commercial facade program. <coughs> the improvements to the facades of the buildings will help local businesses. They'll attract new customers and will have significant impact on the marketability of the surrounding area. The program is designed to give priority to shopping centers and strip malls, buildings with more than three storefronts. That's exactly what we are. I am the applicant of record. I own the company that's the applicant of record. It's right on the 7th Avenue corridor. It's commercial space on the ground floor with street frontage and direct pedestrian access. It's an eligible facade, clearly in need of assistance to correct physical decline. If it's facade, renovation, installation of storefront windows, signage awnings, exterior lighting, it's exactly what the program was designed for. I think the squares in the square, the circles in the circle. It does not involve any residential portions or industrial buildings. It does not involve any liquor stores, adult bookstores, religious institutions. We think we're right on point. We have in place the leasing to far exceed the 50% criteria outlined as leasing requirements in the program. We don't transfer property. If you look at our brochure, everything you see, I started on actually 163rd Street over 25 years ago. 
One of the properties I did is on Biscayne at 163rd. It was called Railway Plaza. It's uh, tenanted by Thai House 2 and Just Looking Optical. I took out the second floor. I took out the wood. It looked like an okay corral. Now it's state of the art. Looks good. It's well maintained. Drive by it and you'll see. Our office is in the neighborhood, so I'll drive by this every day. I pass it every day on the way home. Thank you, sir. I just. Thank you. If I could just say one last thing, which is um, I wanted to thank staff. Um, I wanted to thank the council. Um, and it's not last but not least, it's, it's probably the most important part. We wouldn't get this package in. We wouldn't have gotten our stuff done. Tremendous help. And I just wanted to point out that I think that we'll be a good partner with the city. We put up three quarters of the money. We maintain it. I'm sorry for taking so much time, but I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Is there a motion? <coughs> Second for discussion. Thank you. Public hearing is open on this. Public hearing is now closed. Thank you. Discussion. Madam, please. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead. Um, I just have two things. One, it's it's a nice shopping center. I think it's much needed on 7th Avenue. It looks great. Uh, my problem is why is it an add-on um, for this evening? Is there an emergency? Um, you're asking a lot, so to just be handed this tonight, I'd like to know why, you know, why that happened. On the second question to uh, Councilman Sterrell through the mayor, this is your project, this is your million dollar um, project, and it is 40% of your allocation of the million dollars, correct? It's not my money, it's not my It's not my your project. money, it was, <laughs> well, it's your, you, it's you the allocated city, but it. It's a city project. It's a city so project, um, it, you sponsored it. How? Um, I so have not sponsored yet. Okay, no, you sponsored the million dollars oh. for your first Northwest sure. Seventh Avenue. Sure. So I'm gonna defer to you because it is your this is your you, baby, and um, I'm just saying it's 40% of your million, and if you're good with it and you feel this is okay, then. Thank you. Mr. Galvin. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my concern is for staff and for the applicant as well. I've not had a chance to read any of this. I wasn't given any heads up before the start of this meeting that it would be an add-on. Um, though I'm trying to look through the stuff online real quick, and, and, and I like what I'm seeing. Um, this and I guess a few other add-ons that are to come, I just I was given no visibility into. So I don't like being, I, I work two blocks north of this building, These both of these properties. I would love to see them rehabbed. Um, the devil is in the details, and unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to review those details prior to being asked to make a vote on it. Um, I, I'm still, I'm still weighing whether or not I'm going to vote for or against it. But I, I it's we just got to stop throwing things on agendas without council members being made aware that they're there, without the documentation being given in time for us to be able to review it before the meeting starts, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, in house, we need to. Uh, work on that. Uh, and that's all I've got to say, Madam Mayor. Councilman Bienimi? Nothing. Councilwoman? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I am very excited about this project. Um, Councilwoman Kiz stated this is something that I have been working hard for, for 7th Avenue. However, we have very um, unlimited money. Um, we, I did sit with the applicant, go through the, the project. Um, I sat with the city manager as well. We talked about it for several um, weeks now. Um, we have the money. Unfortunately, we don't have that many applicants. We have been knocking on doors, calling other people to see how, much, how many um, building owners or strip mall owners that would like to come and spend money on 7th Avenue. So far, I think this is the third or the fourth applicant that, well, I, okay, yeah, the second, because that they have two strip mall. So um, I am excited. Um, 
to move forward with the project. However, um, I have a couple of questions which we sit down. This is nothing new. Uh, we sit down, we discuss it. The one of the uh, the project is the one 129 no 130th Street, which is the applicant asking for us to um, give them 105 thousand dollars instead of eighty thousand dollars. Is that clear? Yes. Um, which is I am in full support because I think that he's spending more than what we asking for. I think is it 50 50 or Yes, it's 50%. 50 percent. 50 percent. Correct. And Up to 160. So if they spend 160, they'll get uh, 80, no, it, up to up to 80,000 that 80, we're giving him. The reason that he come before us because he's asking 105,000. Correct. That's why he's before us, which I don't have a problem with. I would rather. I know um, he's moving forward because I did talk to them about. Uh, because that they have two strip malls on 7th Avenue, instead of doing one strip mall to give them the money, and I did ask them um, through the city manager to work on both buildings, then we'll give them some consideration. I, either that we, we, you can choose to vote on those two items differently, or I can make mine, um, uh, my, I can share my concern right now. I don't have a problem with the hundred and five thousand dollars with the hundred and thirtieth street, but I do have a problem giving two hundred and five two hundred twenty five so for the other project which is a hundred and um twenty nine street. I will um make a mo well an amendment to my motion because I wanted the item to be heard, that's why I move it. But I would like to make a amendment to my motion if can I do that, Madam City Attorney? Although that I made the motion, can I can I make a friendly amendment to it, or it has to pass and then come back again? You can amend your motion as the motion maker. Okay, so I I will um, I made my motion 160 thousand for one and 105 with the other one instead of 225 for one. Thank you. Um, that would be my the amendment to my motion. Do I hear it? Okay, we're still into discussion. Okay. Um, there, I, I believe that the Northwest 7th Avenue out of anywhere in the business district needs a facelift. And I think it's something very positive. However, I have a problem and I've told you that city manager, first of all, it was 11 o'clock last night when I found that add-on. And I think... If there's no emergency, there's no reason to throw it at the last minute like that. The second one, the same thing I told you today, and I'm going to say it here. Um, I wish we stop bringing more money to projects like we did for the roofs. I mean, it's like constantly. It was appraised for 20000 asking council to approve 30000 And it's not kosher to me. I think if we appraise something for something and we need to keep it like that because there are so many other projects or other people that can benefit with that type of money. And um, I, I, I don't see myself approving any additional money. I know that you mean well. I know that you um, have invested your own money and I don't think it makes a big difference between $80,000 to $105,000. You can foot that. And I think it's a wonderful thing that you guys are right there on Northwest 7th Avenue. And I, 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 I told the city manager, and I'm telling you again, city manager, in the future, I would like not to see any add-on if that thing is appraised or if the city allocate $80,000, we keep the $80,000. We're not going to ask for any more money than w what it is for because that way we can go ahead and help other businesses or other small businesses that are there um we allocate the money because there are so many moms and pops business that are thriving on northwest seventh avenue that just needs a little push um i don't know i i i first of all it was a turn off the fact the fact that we got it late yesterday 
and uh, there is no emergency for us to start it right away or to approve it right there our last meeting before recess and secondly I think it's way too much asking to add in both plaza almost three hundred thousand dollars that's my position um, I made them uh, I think that I um, uh, combined both items I was under the impression although I was reading I was under the impression that we were doing both together um, which item is the 130th Street Mr. Clerk thank you for clarifying tab I1 okay so I think we'll go tab I1 I make the motion to move tab I1 which is $105 right the motion was made 000. and it was already seconded by Councilman Galvin I'll remove my second only because I'm looking and looking online. I can't even find it online. I've not had a chance to review any of this. I'll remove my second. Okay. So does that mean we want to postpone it for the next council agenda? I'm, I'm willing to continue it. Certainly, continue I want to vote in favor. I mean, I like what I've, I see spur of the moment, but when I've not been given the documents, I'm looking online, I can't find the documents. I don't... I don't like voting blind. I, so. I move my um, motion to, I make a motion to continue the item to the next council agenda. Sure. And I just want to explain uh, why it was an ad It's at the request <coughs> of the applicant. There was a situation where he's trying to negotiate the lease um, with uh, his anchor tenant. And uh, so that's, uh, it wasn't something that staff did, but basically it's a situation that he's in. So, um, so why couldn't it wait after recess? Why at the last minute? Why? Is that, what is, that is the emergency in this I for us to go ahead and, and go with it? Nobody had a chance to review sure. it. Nobody yeah. had a chance to understand what's happening. And then you just throw it like that for us to vote on it. It's not fair to us and it's not fair also to the, 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 the investor. Uh, as I indicated, Mayor, that was a request of the applicant because they're trying to negotiate a lease and time was of the essence. Uh, certainly under normal circumstances, we would have put it at the very next council meeting, but we don't have one. We only have one for December and under, uh, we would have made the applicant wait, uh, therefore his. So you would rather for us to vote it down? I. I already make the motion to continue it. I didn't get a second. I second the motion. Okay. so. Anyone wishes to record a no? Okay, item passes 5-0. Item is tabled. Tab I-2. Would that be the same thing for this tab to be postponed? Mm -hmm. Motion to continue item I-2 to the January, first meeting in January. I second it. Anyone wishes to record a no? All Mr. right. Cook. Tab I-3. Proposed resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, denouncing the Dominican Republic's constitutional court's ruling that children of foreign-born parents are not citizens of the Dominican Republic, calling upon the government of the Dominican Republic to guarantee the human rights of individuals of Haitian descent, urging for the non-implementation of the constitutional court's ruling and seeking the support of local governments to join in the efforts condemning the Dominican Republic's unjust actions, providing for an effective date and for all other purposes. Public hearing is open on this item. Public hearing is closed. Do I hear a motion? Hold the item. The motion. Right here. Second. Madam Keys. No comment. Vice Mayor Galvin? No questions. Good item. Councilman Gianime? No question. Councilwoman? I fully support the item, Madam Mayor. It's Anybody wishes to record a no? Thank you. Mr. Clerk? Tab J. Pharmacy up here. Proposed ordinance of the Mayor and City Council of the City of North Miami, Florida, creating a new Chapter 21 of the City of North Miami Code of Ordinances entitled Code Compliance to update, organize, and clarify the function of the code compliance <coughs> process for the City of North Miami subsequent to the recent amendment of Chapter 2 entitled Administration, recently approved by the Mayor and City Council, providing for conflicts, repeal, severability, codification, and an effective date. Public hearing is open. 
Public is the hearing is now closed. Do I hear a motion? Move approval of tab J. Second. Anyone wishes to record recorded no? Is it, roll call? Is it? Roll call. Clerk. <laughs> tab J roll call. Councilwoman Steril. Yes, Vice Mayor Galvin. Yes. Mayor Thundro. Yes. <coughs> Councilman Bienname. Yes. Councilwoman Keys. Yes. Tab J passes 5 0. Tab J1, which is on the add on agenda. Proposed ordinance. Second reading of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, amending the city of North Miami's comprehensive <laughs> plan pursuant to chapter 163, Florida statutes, by updating the future land use map in order to assign appropriate land use categories to newly annexed properties in an area bordered on the west side by the Biscayne Canal, on the east side by Northeast 4th Avenue, on the south side by Northeast 131st Street, and on the north side by Northeast 135th Street, otherwise known as Area 3, further authorizing the transmittal of the Comprehensive Plan Amendment <coughs> to the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity and all other review agencies as required under Section 163.3184 Florida Statutes, providing for conflicts, severability, codification, and an effective date. Madam Mayor, I'm sorry. Madam Mayor, this is this one is an emergency. We don't have a council meeting until January the 14th. We received the document from the state of Florida uh, just uh, on Microphone. Monday, and we have 60 days to get the application uh, back to the state. Good. Public this hearing is, is open on this one. Public hearing is now closed. I thought Charlie was coming up. Me to too. I was expecting him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and he's walking so slow. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, when yeah. is he going to get there? <laughs> I move approval, Madam Mayor. <laughs> Second. Question. Ooh. Question, Madam Steele. Okay. Um, <coughs> this is an add on. Is it just add on the agenda? That's correct. Well, just for um, um, information purposes. Did is an ordinance can just add on without being advertised? No, it cannot. It was advertised Did for this meeting. For okay. Yes. Any other questions, Mr. Clerk? Oh. Roll call, please. This is roll call for tab J one. <coughs> Mayor Thundro. Yes. Councilman Bienname. Yes. Councilwoman Keys. Yes. Councilwoman Steril. Yes. And Vice Mayor Galvin. Yes. Item passes 5 0. <coughs> okay. Um, <coughs> tab L1. Now, this particular item is a quasi judicial item, so therefore, please be advised that this particular item on the agenda, um, all testimony, including public testimony and evidence, will be made under oath or affirmation. If anyone wishes to be heard on tab, L1, please rise so you can be sworn in. L1? Thank you. Tab L1. On the, add -on, on, that's a, on the add on as well. It's the, it's it's public hearing is open. Mm -hmm. Public hearing is now closed. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second. Discussion? Uh, Mr. Clerk, roll call. Councilwoman Keys? Yes. Councilwoman Steril? Yes. Vice Mayor Galvin? Yes. Mayor Thundro? Yes. Councilman Bienname? Yes. Item passes 5 0. Okay, so tonight. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Two, now we're on. Sick. Sick. Well, back often. and forth, yeah. Tab K. Proposed ordinance of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, adopting a small scale land use plan amendment to the city of North Miami comprehensive plan future land use map for the lots located at 1401 Northeast 123rd Street, otherwise described as a portion of lots 9, 10, and 11 of 
Bethia. Bethia subdivision from high density residential to industrial land use designation in order to allow for the future expansion of an existing business consistent with the intent of the City of North Miami Comprehensive Plan and further authorizing the City Manager to do all things necessary to effectuate the subject small scale land use plan amendment as required by Florida law, provided for conflicts, severability, codification, and an effective date. Public hearing is open. Any special presentation, Mr. Manager? None from staff. Okay. Mr. Woolen. Thank you. Are you ready to hear from the applicant? He's there? Well, he I'm, I'm here. Okay. And my client had an emergency at home, but I'm prepared to proceed. And if we have any questions, maybe we can come back. But okay. I know you have a long agenda, and I know you're anxious to move through it. <laughs> to go home. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Good. Okay. I'm Frank Wolin on behalf of Shaney Management, which is the auto repair facility on 123rd Street, just east of the railroad tracks um, on the north side of the street. And I know all of you drive by it and have driven by it many times every day. Um, the property is now zoned high density residential and I suspect that's because there's a Three Horizons condominium there um, it's not a property that really would be constructed for residential or high-rise high purposes, although perhaps sometime in the future it may be. It is presently um, a car repair facility. It's been that way, I think, for more than 20 years. My client would like to expand and upgrade his business. He'd like to offer car rentals, six spaces, and he'd like to have a car wash and detailing canopy, and we've submitted plans to the city. And originally, when I met with city staff, I recommended and thought that the appropriate zoning would be B2 commercial because it's on the commercial corridor. Staff felt more comfortable giving it the industrial zoning, which is what exists on the other side of the railroad tracks and on, the, you know, on both sides. And they felt that that was more consistent and that it would permit the uses that my client wanted to bring to this particular property. We think it's an improvement. It will offer additional services to the public. It will improve the property. It will create jobs. And it will provide convenience. I know I went to rent a car a couple of months ago. I had to go to the Enterprise up in North Miami Beach. By the time I got there with the line, there wasn't even a car anyway after waiting for an hour. So I think it's a very convenient thing and it's a positive thing. It's a good change. It provides services for our residents. It's consistent. It's been recommended by staff. Uh, it's got the unanimous vote of the Planning Commission who kept us up and asked us a lot of questions and voiced a lot of concerns which we addressed. Um, I did speak very briefly uh, with Councilwoman Keyes. She had some concerns because a property that is owned industrial I say theoretically, could perhaps become a strip club or a liquor store or other, other uses. This property is close to the school. It can't ever be used that way. But in order to allay her concerns, I prepared a declaration of restrictions, which I offered to uh, the manager and to the city attorney. And, uh, and it, it provides and that, that uses which are prohibited, it can never be used for adult businesses, bars, gun shops, package stores, nightclubs, tow truck yards. So this is a positive improvement. We've put in safeguards to address everyone's concerns. And uh, I want to thank staff for their professional handling of it and urge you to vote for it. And happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Is there a motion? So, so move. Second. I'd like to discuss this, please. Go ahead. I am very much against this rezoning of this property, um, which I've discussed with Mr. Wallen. Number one, this is our 125th Street corridor, which we are looking to improve. I've pulled out different items. Um, also, we have a train depot for All Aboard Florida, which is going to be probably within a few, feet, few hundred feet of this property. 
This property also sits next to, adjacent to 317 residential apartments. <coughs> not, no, excu not, excuse me, condominiums. They are owned by uh, residential owners. Um, our CRA states that the goal of our CRA, which this property is in, is to phase out obsolete structures and non-conforming land uses. We are to phase out non-conforming land uses, not legitimize them. By giving this the industrial zoning, certain uses um, will be permitted, such as adult businesses, um, check cashing stores, dry cleaning, uh, liquor stores, um, self-service laundries, self-storage warehouses. Cars can be stored outside on these. This can be a tow truck yard. Vehicles can be st uh, stored outside in the public. That is not the kind of property and use we want for this um, going forward with our plan to redevelop uh, the downtown. Uh, we just did a master corridor plan. We spent several, I think it was like $23,000 for a plan. Um, they recommend that we verify the location and the timing of our FEC depot for future commuter trains and consider a special planning area within a half mile of that depot. Uh, consider moving ahead with land use changes that would allow for mixed use development that supports <coughs> transit oriented design. Uh, they still say to consider um, getting rid of the industrial. The city sh sh further it states, the city should need to determine the validity and timing of our FEC depot. The city should consider moving ahead with a change in land use appropriate for this type of railroad corridor and at least one half mile around the depot. If it's formally announced, the depot, um, if the depot does not become a reality, then the corridor is better served for other uses than industrial. And due to the station's location and close proximity to downtown and the Biscayne Boulevard corridor, the city should consider the redevelopment potential of the surrounding properties plan for tran TOD transit-oriented development. And basically, our plans state that we should look to fix up this property. And I appreciate the offering of a covenant not to only use it for certain uses. But once we give it the zoning of industrial, all the permitted uses will be there. This property is really a valuable property. It can be really a good hub. Uh, our city, our plans, all our reports in this major corridor show that this should be a mixed use. This should be, res you know, um, the car rental is not a bad idea. And I don't have a problem <laughs> with the use staying as it is, but I really am very much against rezoning a piece of property like that on our 123rd Street. We've had other properties, like the Spotmaster wanted to go industrial. There are no other in, uh, industrial properties on 123rd Street except across the street. And I would point out that um, several people had made comments. I don't want to do anything disparaging. But I did go to the police department today, and there have been 583 calls on that property in the past 12 years since the ownership of the property. And I'm, I'm just really against please, um, please, please. rezoning this property at this time when we're looking to redevelop this area. Ma Madam Mayor, may I briefly respond? Yes. Because I felt that maybe, maybe Mrs. Keyes wasn't listening. I know she's a lawyer. I can't believe she doesn't understand that I've offered a binding declaration of restrictions, which says, which have you seen this? It doesn't matter because we are, a, we are making permitted uses. We're zoning it, and it gives permitted uses. All it takes is to okay. come back, and you, you, owner, as soon as you sell this property, right now you've got Mr. Rappaport, and he wants to do what he wants to do. When he sells this property in a year, and someone comes back, and they'll say, but it's a permitted use. We want an exception to They can't do that. do that. Absolutely, they can, and I okay. spoke to our city attorney about it. Okay, well, uh, maybe a when covenant, she A covenant can be changed. If a city council approves a covenant, a city council can approve uh, deleting certain right. exceptions. but it's up to you. It's not up to him. In other words, he's agreeing that as long as this is recorded, which is forever, that he it will not be used as an adult business bar, tavern, all... All the things she said, tow yard, he agrees he's not going to do it. He's not going to ask to do it. The property is burdened with this declaration of restrictions, which is legally binding, 
and I prepared it in order to address the councilwoman's concerns. Let me make another point. If this becomes Dayland North, in other words, they bring the rail up here, please God, okay? I promise you the next day, the day after you announce it, this gentleman will be there saying, please, I'd like to be able to build a 25 foot st high story building with commercial on the bottom and condominiums on the top because my property will be so much more valuable if that happens, okay? That's reality. So you don't have to worry about him wanting to keep a car repair place when he could cash out and get millions of dollars for high density, which is, by the way, kind of what it's zoned now, except that's not what it's used now. The use now is inconsistent with the present zoning. Okay. And Thank and you. Thank you. It's okay. Right. I, I, and we, I invite you to picture. ask the city attorney whether this is no. Don't we got the picture. We got the picture, okay. Mr. Wallen. Thank you. Now, l let me ask you this. Um, I know in the city of North Miami, we don't have any car rental place. Because when I need to rent one, I either have to go to the airport or go to North Miami Beach to do that at the budget location. Enterprises. <coughs> not in North Miami. Not in North Miami. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, Enterprise. Very good. Now, where would you put, because uh, this afternoon I was at an MPO um, mm -hmm. meeting regarding that auto broad Miami. They are still from now uh, to two years from now at the study uh, 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 space, uh, pace. They, there's nothing definite and it's not even sure because they want to see how much money we as a city are going to put into their, their thing. So there is nothing for sure that is going to happen. Now, my question to you, uh, Mr. Wallen, you can ask your client, where would you put those cars? There are six spaces. Um, they would be put right up by the side toward the front. On Pe 123rd or is it on the side on 12th? No, on th 14. There is there is no side. In other words, the street the the, uh, the street that ran between the railroad track and this business has been closed, closed off. So there is no side street. The only street that this property fronts on is 123rd Street. How many cars is he talking about? That six cars for rental. Six? six, six, six spaces dedicated to rental cars, and and I think the enterprise that they're talking about is like across the street or across the way. So I mean, if they could do it, why wouldn't you let a, a gentleman right. who's chosen to you know invest his whole life in our city do mm -hmm. it? And convenience, well, for all those three hundred and sixteen people in the condominium, I think it'd be even convenient for them and their visitors. Why not? It's Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion, Mr. Clerk? No. Will call, please. Yes, Mayor. Councilman Bienname. Yes. Councilwoman Keyes? No. Councilwoman Steril? Vice Mayor Galvin? No. Mayor Thundro? Yes. Could we ask that Councilwoman uh, yeah, Sterile? Yeah, two four. This is regarding tab K. Yes. Item, was that a vote, madam? Um, vice, I mean, um, Councilwoman Stereo? Yeah. Okay, item passes 3 2. Tab K passes. Thank you very two. much. Thank you. Okay, tab L, regular L, the one that's not on the add on agenda. And I'm sorry about this back and forth, and I'm dealing with like four. This statues. is a mess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Regarding tab L, it is also a quasi-judicial matter. If anyone wants to be heard on this item, you have to be sworn. Okay, no one needs to be sworn in. Tab L, proposed ordinance, first reading of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, city Florida. Right. We done with that. We've done that, don't we? Yeah, we finished with that. Yeah. That's it. Item passes yeah. three two. Yeah. Sit down, Frank. Yeah. Item passes three two. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it caught my surprise. I don't no. know. Okay, so I'm going to start over. This is regarding tab L. Proposed ordinance, first reading of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, amending chapter 29 of the city of North Miami Code of Ordinances, entitled Land Development Regulations, by amending the city of North Miami official zoning map referenced in Article 1, Section 1-106, 
to reflect the rezoning of the lots located at 1401 Northeast 123rd Padilla subdivision from the current R6 residential zoning designation to allow for the future expansion of an existing business consistent with the intent of the City of North Miami Comprehensive Plan, providing for conflicts, severability, codification, and an effective date. Public hearing is open. Public hearing is now closed. Isn't it the same thing as K? The same thing, yes. yeah. The map. One was a land use plan, the other one is a zoning. Yes. Okay. It's so right. the same. Okay. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Again, I am not in agreement with um, rezoning a portion, a parcel on 125th Street major corridor to industrial. It's not what our planners, it's not what we've um, been advised to do. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, roll call, please. Councilwoman. I, I, have, I have a question, Madam Mayor, if you allow me. Go ahead. Um, for, I think I was advised for rezoning that we need um, a super majority vote. Madam, Mr. Clerk, Madam City Attorney. That is correct. So, did we, that was not a rezoning, what we just voted, or what we're about to? The first one was a land use. This okay. one, uh, this item. This one is. L this one is. We are regular L. L, regular L, is a zoning map change amendment. So, that would require a super majority for so votes. Okay. I thought it was supposed to do the other way around. The zoning first and then the land use doesn't matter. No, first you change first you amend change the amendment. comprehensive land use and then you amend the zoning map. Uh, okay.